Hey, what's up y'all? My name is Chris Abbott, but all my friends just call me Abbo. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to market your church for free. And so I'll be sharing with you some free ideas that I've used at my church that you can use at yours in order to kind of help get the word out and market your church for free, coming up. <laughs> Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, we are constantly putting out new videos and fresh content on church growth and how to use social media to attract new visitors to grow your church. And I'll share with you a strategy that you can use at the local elementary school that's not only gonna help you serve the teachers but also attract new families. So let's dive in. All right, so number one is a Google grant. Okay, now you may have heard about this before or you may have no idea what I'm talking about, but here's the deal. Google actually has a program for nonprofits where they will give you $10,000 per month in free Google AdWords. And that's as good as it sounds, right? I know people are like, well, what's the catch? There is no catch, right? It's a tax write-off for them. They literally have a program, it's called a Google Grant. And as long as you have a 5013C and you are a nonprofit, you can apply and actually get a Google Grant for your church. And so you literally have $10,000 a month in free Google AdWords that you can use to attract new visitors to your church. We found out about this uh, years ago and I went out and actually applied for it and got it for my church. And so ever since then, like almost immediately, once we got it, we started sending an additional six to 8,000 people per month to our website using Google's money. So you can literally use Google's money to share the gospel with people and invite them to church and it doesn't cost you a dime, right? So uh, what you can do is if you actually just Google Google Grant, you'll, you'll actually find the program page you can read all about it, right? There's a couple of things that you have to do. Like you have to keep at least a 5% click-through rate and stuff like that, and they'll kind of walk you through it. But again, this is available to anyone who is a nonprofit. So I definitely recommend getting this for your church. Again, that's just a ton of free advertising. And literally, it is $120,000 per year in free Google AdWords. So check it out. All right, number two, you can create a local podcast or a local YouTube channel. Now, the advantage of this is this is going to kind of set you up as an authority inside of your city, right? So one of the things I would recommend is you could create a podcast and then interview local business owners around town, right? Just about like, you know, what it is that makes their pizza so great, right? Or what it is about their dentist office and what got them into dentistry. So if you begin to do this and just every single week you're dropping new episodes of local business owners and maybe you're interviewing city council members or the mayor or the local principal at you know the local high school what's gonna happen is right slowly but surely you're gonna build an audience of people who begin to look at you as an authority and kind of a respected community figure around town right and you're uh, not to mention this is a great way to get in front of a lot of really influential people inside of your city and to build a relationship with them right so it doesn't cost you anything except for time so either a YouTube channel or a podcast and just focus on everything local and everything you're city and you're going to reach a lot of people. All right, number three, fill the fridge. Now, this is my personal favorite, okay? I absolutely love this one. My wife actually came up with this idea and it works really, really well, right? So the idea is basically all you want to do is you want to reach out to the local schools, like the local elementary school, maybe even the local middle school and high school, depending on what you want to do. And all you want to do is just talk to the principal and say, hey, we just appreciate what you guys are doing so much. We appreciate what your teachers are doing and you know just how hard it is to be a teacher right now, especially with everything everyone just came through with COVID. And so just to kind of give back and say thank you, we'd love to come into the teacher's lounge once a month and just fill the fridge. We just want to stock it full of like some good, you know, coffee drinks and sodas and just whatever you guys want. You know, we'll throw some snacks in there. We want to fill the fridge once a month. And I'm telling you, you're going to see the principal's eyes just light up, right? They're not going to believe that you'd be willing to do this, to come into the teacher's lounge and just fill a bunch of like drinks and snacks and that kind of stuff up. The teachers are going to love it too. This is a really, really cheap way to do it, but we're specifically going all in on how to do this for free in this video. So if you are on such a tight budget that you can't afford, you know, a couple of cases of soda and coffee drinks and maybe like some Little Debbie snack cakes, then what I recommend is just have some people in your church, you know, bake some cookies and some cupcakes, and that kind of stuff, keep it all homemade. And then just ask, uh, you know, a couple of people in your church if they would be willing to support this ministry, talk about exactly what the money's going to go to, and just ask them if they'd be willing to give an extra 20 bucks a month to uh, go towards filling the fridge at the local schools. I promise there's going to be some people in your congregation who are going to be willing to step up and do this and give an extra 20 bucks, right? And if you get 
five people per month who are willing to give an extra 20 bucks, you've got $100. Now, that's plenty. You could literally cover the elementary school, the middle school, and the high school on 100 bucks a month and just fill them full of the good stuff, right? Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, my personal favorite, Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew, anything that they want, right? Starbucks drinks, a couple of snack cakes and that kind of stuff. And then finally, the most important part, make sure that you always leave a note, right? Just something like, hey, teachers, this is Pastor Chris. I just want to thank you so much for the job that you're doing. I want you to know that what you're doing matters and you're making a difference. Thanks again for all that you do. We came in and filled the fridge. Love, Pastor Chris and your friends at Faith Church. Right, so that's gonna go a really, really long way in the community. What's gonna happen is not only are the teachers gonna appreciate it, but it's gonna cause a buzz among the staff and the teachers and the administration is gonna start to talk about it, right? That's gonna filter out to some of the families in the community. And I'm telling you, you're gonna end up attracting new families from that school, not only from the teachers, but some of the parents because word's gonna get out about how much you appreciate teachers and all that you do for them. All right, next up is host a community dance. There's a couple different ways that you can do this, uh, right? Like you could do a Sadie Hawkins dance, you can do a father-daughter dance, which is always very cool, right? You can do a prom, right? And they could literally just be a prom, but open it up to absolutely everybody. Or my, my personal favorite, a $5 prom, right? Where you literally just do a prom and everybody, can, right? fathers can bring daughters, mothers can bring sons, right? Husbands and wives can come out. Anybody can come and bring a date, but it's a $5 prom. So you can't spend more than $5 on your outfit. Right, these are a lot of fun, right? They don't cost any money to just set up some speakers, bump some music, right? And have some people come out. Everyone has a really, really good time and they have you to thank for it. All right, next up is a chili cook-off. This one is fun because you can get a bunch of people from all over your neighborhood and your community to kind of come in and this can be a great time for everybody. So you can have a chili cook-off and literally just allow anybody to come in and actually create chili and enter the contest. And, or you can actually reach out to local restaurants and see if they would like to come in and be part of the chili cook-off, right? It's a great promotion for them to come out and actually, you know, kind of get the word out about their chili and about the restaurant, but it's also just makes it a lot of fun for everybody to come out. Just have a good time, right? You can even have local bands come out and play music during this, but it just becomes this really kind of cool, kind of local festival, right? That you're having at your church and people just come out in the name of chili and great music. That's a lot of fun. All right, next up, movies on the lawn. Now, I think a lot of churches have either tried this in the past or at least aware of this idea, but I love it, right? So it's literally all you do is just get a projector and you're gonna project like a Disney movie onto either the side of your church or onto a giant white sheet in the lawn of your church or even in the parking lot, right? And then just invite families to come out, bring lawn chairs and just set up and watch a movie together. This is always fun. Everyone loves family movie night, right? And that kind of stuff. But there's just something fun about doing this like in the summer outside, right? So whether it's a giant, white sheet that you're watching it on or if you're just projecting it onto the side of your church. Either way, families are going to come out and have a great time, right? So just open this up to the entire community. Invite everybody to come out and have a great time. In fact, you can even have your youth ministry selling concessions to raise money for missions or to raise money for their budget or for summer camp or something like that, right? So just have them go to Sam's, buy a bunch of candy bars and then sell everything for a dollar and they'll make a ton of money. So before I get to my last couple of ideas, I want to encourage you, would you subscribe to this channel? Make sure to to hit that little bell notification. That way you get a notification every single time we drop a new video. All right, next up, host a kite flying day. Right? This one is super simple, right? but families love this. Everybody loves flying a kite, but think about it. Everyone forgets about flying a kite. Unless you like go to the beach or something, you just never think, you know what we should do is go fly a kite. But kids love this and it's a lot of fun. So just let your community know that you are having a kite flying day at the church this Saturday and just invite everybody out. right? And then just you as the pastor, make sure to go around, shake hands, introduce yourself to a few people, just make sure that you're meeting some people. A great idea, if you have a couple extra bucks, is that you can actually buy a couple of kites for kids that show up that either don't have a kite or maybe like their kite breaks while they're there, right? That's the last thing you want is some kids throwing a fit because they forgot one or their kite broke. So you can go to the dollar store, you can just buy a couple of kites and now you've got a couple of backups in case people show up for the first time and they need one, right? And again, you look like a hero for saving the day with the brand new kite. So pretty easy, a lot of fun and really impactful because you're gonna get a chance to meet a ton of families from the community and you're doing it all for free. All right, host a business leadership event. Now, I love this one because I'm telling you, as an entrepreneur, business owners love to be involved in the community, right? Entrepreneurs love to kind of coach and help people. A lot of times they're passionate about helping other business leaders. So if you reach out to some of the local business owners inside of your community, some of the entrepreneurs, and just ask them to come out and teach a leadership event, you know, on like a Tuesday night at the church, and then just invite the entire city. So you can ask local business owners to teach anything from business principles to marketing 101, 
one to leadership, right? It doesn't matter, whatever it is that they're passionate about. And then opening this up to the people in your community just is a huge value add for anyone who's interested in learning more about marketing or business or maybe even starting a business. Next up, have a treasure hunt. This one is pretty simple. You can just hide buried treasure or even just hide random items from around the church all over the church property and then invite the community to come out and have a good time, right? This is a, a great family night and just hand out treasure maps to every single person who shows up, right? So all the kids can kind of come in and they get to go on the treasure hunt and either they find buried treasure or they have to find that item and mark down, you know, where it is on the map and all that kind of stuff and then they can move on to the next one. Again, really simple to put something like this together. It doesn't cost anything, but it's a lot of fun and it ends up being a great night for families. And now if you have that on a Saturday, you can invite them to come back to church on Sunday. All right, and finally, have a marriage conference. Now, you could have a free marriage conference or you could charge a couple of bucks admission. So pick a theme like, I want a new marriage or happily never after or relationship rehab, right? Something that's a little bit catchy and then just advertise this to the community and invite everyone who's married to come out to your marriage conference, right? And then teach, this can be like an all day Saturday or it could be like a Friday night, but just have this conference and then invite everyone to come back on Sunday morning for the kickoff of your brand new series, Dun, da, da, da. that's a marriage series, right? So this is a great way to kind of ramp up to it, to kind of create a value add kind of ministry first to your community. And I'll tell you what, if you have a really good name of the actual conference itself, and then you have a really good name on your corresponding marriage series that's starting on Sunday, you're gonna get a lot of people who come back for the marriage series. Now, here's a pro tip. If you use taboo words in the name of your marriage series, you're actually gonna get a lot more people, specifically probably a lot more men who are dragging their wives to church instead of the other way around. Okay, so if you just have like some fun names of your marriage series, like Great Sex or Naked Marriage or God Loves Sex, these are a couple of ideas that are gonna specifically speak to men and you're gonna get a lot more people who are gonna come from the conference and come back to your sermon series. But whatever it is, just make sure to have a clear call to action and give them a reason why they wanna come back on Sunday morning and talk about the questions you're specifically gonna be answering at that service. All right, so we covered a lot of different free ideas that you can do, but if you wanna learn a little bit more about how you can use paid social media to be able to target people in your city and actually attract new Sunday morning visitors, then head on over to churchgrowthagency.com. We have a free video showing you exactly how to use social media technology to attract a steady stream of new visitors every single Sunday, or you can simply click on the link in the description below. We'll see you soon.